Um, Dr. Vadiraj is a senior consultant radiation oncologist at Manipal Hospital. He was formerly in the Manipal Manipal Hospital. I know him for the last 15 years or so. And he'll be able to clarify some of the newer trials, controversies, and come to a consensus about what is the present day thinking in the treatment of early endometrial carcinoma in terms of radiation therapy. Dr. Vadiraj, the stage is yours. So the topic is bracket therapy versus external beam radiotherapy in endometrial cancer. So uh, before considering which one is uh, actually recommended in case of carcinoma endometrium, we have to understand certain uh, uh, factors which influence the outcomes in endometrial cancer. So why post-operative radiotherapy is advised in end early endometrial cancer? Early stage patient with adverse pathologic features increase the risk of extra uterine disease that is the pelvic lymph node or paraortic or distant metastasis based on various combination of these factors and the stage. So some of these factors are the age, the stage, age uh, in case in uh, Portec they have taken the cutoff of less than 60 and more than 60 whereas in GOG they have taken as 60 between uh, uh, 60 to 70 and more than 70 and stage uh, lower stage that is uh, if less than half of myometrium stage 1A probably the chance of pelvic or paraortic lymph node involvement is less once the myometrial invasion is there then the chances of uh, these nodal involvement chances are high and as the stage goes up then probably paraortic lymph node and distant metastasis chances are more and uh, histopathologic type 80% of them are endometroid type and uh, uh, less than 20% of them are serous or clear cell. Serous has got worse prognosis compared to uh, clear cell variant. Uh, serous uh, uh, variant it has a 5 year survival rate of somewhere around 40% whereas clear cell has somewhere around 60%. And coming to the grade, grade also influences on the outcomes in endometrial cancer and helps in making a decision based on any of these, uh, we combined with any of these factors. Grade 3 is generally believed to be aggressive and nowadays once it is grade 3 they are adding chemotherapy also. And depth of myometrial invasion you already know that less than half and more than half it is quite important. FIGO 88 they had divided into 3, 1 A, B, C, uh, inner middle and outer but now uh, it is only inner portion or the outer, inner half of the myometrium or outer half of the myometrium as per the 2009 FIGO. And presence of LVSI is always an indicator of pelvic or paraortic lymph node involvement and uh, hence uh, uh, radiation plays an important role once LVS, LVSI is present. And all these things are systematically studied in uh, GOG 93 in this publication that is surgical pathological. Uh, spread patterns of endometrial cancer and here uh, I'll come come into this uh, each uh, few of these important characteristics they have seen the stage histology grade myometrial invasion peritoneal cytology though peritoneal cytology is not considered in staging system now uh, still uh, surgeons do a peritoneal cytology and this influences the uh, treatment uh, decision and the site of tumor location whether it is in the myometrium or extending to the cervix and various other factors. Just want to highlight out of this particular GOG 33 uh, based on the grade you, you can see here uh, grade 1 and 2 the chances of positive pelvic lymph nodes are less and uh, even the paraortic lymph node involvement is less. Uh, in case of grade 3 the positive pelvic lymph node chances are almost 18 percent which is statistically significant and paraortic lymph node invasion is almost around 11 percent that is also statistically significant. If you take into uh, consideration the myometrial invasion the superficial and middle as per the GOG 88 uh, uh, when they had divided into superficial middle and deep the superficial and middle had lesser chance of pelvic or paraortic lymph node involvement whereas if you see if there is a deep myometrial invasion the chances of uh, pelvic lymph node goes up to 25 percent and paraortic lymph node involvement chances goes up to 17 percent. If you combine this grade and myometrial invasion what happens? You can see here grade 1, 2, 3 and inner, middle and deep as per the GOG 88 because most of the studies were based on the uh, FIGO uh, sorry FIGO 88 uh, staging and uh, if you see here if there is deep uh, myometrial invasion and if it is a grade 3 there is a highest risk of pelvic lymph node uh, positivity 
Uh, similarly, if you take deep myometrial invasion and grade 3, the, there is a highest risk of paraortic lymph node uh, invasion. So coming to other prognostic factors which are to be considered when we take a decision uh, for adjuvant treatment in endometrial cancers are lower uterine segment involvement, the cervix, cervix involvement. Uh, earlier in FIGO 88, uh, they had made a stage 2 A and B based, based on the depth of invasion, but now uh, it is only uh, stage 2. Uh, if cervix involvement is there, then uh, it almost behaves like a cervix cancer, then the chances of uh, pelvic lymph node involvement goes up. So you have to add adjuvant treatment. And the peritoneal fluid cytology, probably this is uh, important to know, basically to add adjuvant chemotherapy. If there is adnexia or serosal involvement, then it becomes a stage 3. And then the uh, local regional control as well as uh, handling the systemic metastasis is important. Pelvic and paraortic lymph nodes. Once there is paraortic lymph node or pelvic lymph node, this is invariably an indicator of distant metastasis. The distant metastasis chances goes almost more than 30%, 30 to 40%. Now there are molecular uh, markers which are considered in the management of endometrial cancer, but uh, still we are not using routinely. P53 positivity and HER2 new positivity, it indicates poor outcome and P10 and microsatellite instability, uh, which is suggestive of favorable uh, this one. So it is important to know for us uh, the risk stratification of endometrial cancer. Here I have mentioned, uh, given a color code that is green, low risk. The risk is less stage 1A, uh, grade 1 and 2, endometroid type, histopathology, uh, histology is important. This is a low risk. Uh, why this is significant? Because low risk patients may not require any adjuvant treatment even if the patient does not undergo lymphadenectomy, uh, which I will uh, show in next few slides. Then there is an intermediate risk in Portec 1 and GOG 99. They had initially put intermediate risk and high intermediate risk as 1. When they did ad hoc analysis, they took out this high intermediate risk and then they showed the outcomes. So what this intermediate risk says, stage 1A and grade 3 and stage 1B, grade 1 and 2 endometroid type, these fall into intermediate risk. And in high intermediate risk, age comes into picture. In uh, GOG in uh, POTEC 1, they have taken 60 as the cutoff, whereas in GOG they have taken uh, less than 50, 50 to uh, 69 and more than 70, which I will show in the next slide. So age 60 or more with LVSI and or LVSI, stage 1A grade 3 falls into high intermediate risk and age 60 or more and 1B grade 1 and 2 endometroid type, this also falls into high intermediate risk. Coming to stage 1B, that is outer half of the myometrium and grade 3 endometroid type, uh, uh, this falls into high risk and any stage 2 or 3 or non-endometroid, that is serous and clear cell, they have a chance of uh, uh, distant metastasis, so they fall into high risk category. So before we uh, consider any adjuvant treatment, it is good to know uh, this particular uh, risk stratification. Coming to the management of early endometrial cancer based on these risk factors which I discussed just now. Stage 1A grade 1, um, as I mentioned there is no uh, need for any adjuvant treatment. Is there any evidence? Saab et al compared observation versus vaginal brachytherapy in uh, these patients with stage 1A grade 1 and 2. Here you can see the vaginal recurrence chances uh, in observation arm versus vaginal brachytherapy arm. It is not that statistically significant, it is almost the same. Pelvic recurrence chances also, it is not statistically different between the observation or vaginal brachytherapy. But if you look into the vaginal toxicity, in this stage 1, A, grade 1 and 2, you try to treat every patient with vaginal brachytherapy, probably the toxicity goes up. So this is statistically significant. Hence post-op surgery, uh, post-surgery uh, observation alone is sufficient in this stage 1, A, grade 1 and 2 endometroid type, even when lymphadenectomy is not done. And uh, this has also been pointed out in the Cochrane meta-analysis which included 8 trials. EBRT reduces local regional recurrence because they have put all these low risk, intermediate risk and uh, high intermediate risk. This reduces local regional recurrence. No significant difference in overall survival. Significant morbidity and quality of life mainly related to rectal and bladder problems and adverse effects on endometrial cancer survival when used for uncomplicated low risk. If you use radiation for stage 1A, this is of course, all these are 
external radiation stay stage 1a grade 1 and 2 if you use external radiation or any bracket or probably the toxicity will go up so that's why they say no need of external radiation for stage 1a grade 1 and 2 coming to intermediate risk i'll come into this portec 1 and gog 99 later if you see here the local original relapse rates because this is one gray area uh, intermediate risk if you in uh, nccn if you see they are tell uh, either vaginal brachytherapy can be considered or the patients can be observed but i i prefer to uh, subject these patients to vaginal brachytherapy at least that is because portec 1 and gog 99 they have not stratified initially the intermediate and high intermediate risk when all these things put together there was a difference between uh, the uh, local regional relapse between the uh, EBRT arm uh, and the uh, observation arm that is 4 versus 14 percent which was statistically significant and when they did a ad hoc analysis the benefit was much more that is 5 percent versus 18 percent and in GOG 99 also the same thing was shown in all the intermediate risk intermediate plus high intermediate risk put together the difference was in the EBRT arm 3 percent and uh, in observation it is 12 when they did the additional analysis stratifying the patients into high intermediate risk that this difference was very significant 13 percent versus 27 percent. So as intermediate risk group also showed benefit with RT external radiation therapy is not required vaginal brachytherapy is advised in intermediate risk though benefits is more in high intermediate risk. And if you see the 15 years radiotherapy outcomes uh, of the POTEC 1 study, you can see the intermediate and high intermediate risk both put together. There is a difference between no RT versus RTM. The number of relapses are less in RTM. If you see those, uh, when the ad hoc analysis is done in POTEC 1 and GOG 99, in, and when the patients were stratified into high intermediate risk, the difference is much more when compared to all the intermediate risk put together. So definitely there is an advantage in adding vaginal brachytherapy in intermediate risk. So coming to uh, the management of intermediate risk cases, this table uh, I'll just summarize because it is like the POTEC has defined in different way, GOG has defi defined in a different way. They have taken 60 or more, here they have made 50, 70 and 60. Uh, some great difference is there and uh, the myometrial invasion pattern also less than 50, more than 50 they have taken, here 66, more than 66. The summary is you take these three factors into consideration outer third myometrial invasion, lymphovascular space invasion, grade 3. Age more than 670 with any one of these risk factor puts the patient in high intermediate risk. 50 to 69 with any of the two risk factors puts the patient at high intermediate risk. Less than 50 if all these risk factors are there the patient is considered to be in high intermediate risk. According to the POTEC, it is simple, age less than 60 and or uh, LVSI and stage 1A grade 3. If these factors are there more than 60, stage 1A grade 3, then it is a high intermediate risk. Age more than 60, 1B grade 1 and 2 also comes as high intermediate risk. So this is the definition of high intermediate risk as per GOG and uh, as per the POTEC. So there are various trials conducted uh, that is uh, the first of uh, the trial is that ALDERS and then the POTEC one was published in 2000 after that uh, the GOG 99 in 2004 and then uh, ASTEC EN5 in uh, 2009. So what do all these studies say? They show that uh, there is a difference when uh, radiotherapy is added and the local regional relapse is reduced to 1.9 vers uh, percent versus 6.9 percent. However, there was no difference in the overall survival. Same thing was proved in case of POTEC 1, 4 percent versus 14 percent for the intermediate risk. There is no difference in overall survival. If you come to GOG 99, again there is a benefit in local regional relapse uh, prevention with radiation, external beam radiation. All these trials were with external beam radiation. And in Aztec EN5, that is one of the, the NCI, uh, National Cancer Institute Canada and uh, then some of the patients were from this group and uh, some of the patients were added from the uh, medical research council and uh, total of 905 patients. Here also if you see the local regional relapse rate is 3.2 percent when radiation is given versus 6.1 when uh, RT was external RT was not given. This is 6.1 versus 3.2 because here in the observation arm 
both these Aztec and EN5, they allowed vaginal brachytherapy to be given. So when vaginal brachytherapy was given in more than 50% of the cases in this Aztec EN5, the local regional relapse rate was 6.1 compared to in the previous trial which was 14% plus. So then they thought probably external radiotherapy is too much for this high intermediate risk so maybe vaginal brachytherapy alone is sufficient. So then the other trials the Portec 2 and other things came. So just to summarize this Portec 1 which I mentioned in the last table high intermediate risk which I already told whole pelvic radiotherapy reduced local recurrence from 23 to 5% all the intermediate risk put together high intermediate risk and low intermediate risk. Vaginal recurrence accounted for 75%. So most of the recurrences were in the vagina so they thought probably we can address this problem only with vaginal brachytherapy not external beam radiotherapy. Why adverse effects were 26 percent in whole pelvic radiotherapy so that is why probably giving only vaginal brachytherapy would bring down these uh, bowel toxicities. So just to show the picture uh, because most of these trials are done when uh, the technology was old maybe earlier days they used to use parallel opposed or four field nowadays we use 3D conformal radiation in uh, uh, earlier days probably we used to treat uh, the parametrium upper half of the vagina and all the lymph node drainage sites. So that is why the bowel toxicities were high when parallel opposed beams were used but nowadays when there is an indication to include when there is an indication to include the lymph nodes when probably the lymph node dissection is not done and high risk features are there maybe we have to cover but with the 3D conformal technique we can avoid all these bubble loops. So coming to the Portec study because Portec 1 uh, most of the recurrences were in vagina and the uh, Aztec EN5 showed that when observation arm were given uh, brachytherapy they had a reduced uh, local regional relapse. So this uh, uh, study was published in uh, uh, 2000 uh, probably 9, 2000 uh, yeah. So the high intermediate risk patients 427 patients you can see here external beam radiotherapy versus vaginal brachytherapy relapse rate vaginal relapse local relapse it was not significantly different from external beam and vaginal brachytherapy when it comes to acute toxicity there was a statistically significant difference in reduction of the acute toxicity which was 54 percent with external beam radiotherapy and 13 percent in vaginal brachytherapy. So then on for high intermediate risk they recommend only vaginal brachytherapy not the external beam radiotherapy. So you can see uh, this picture how vaginal brachytherapy is done uh, there is a vaginal applicator and we generally prescribe uh, from the surface of the uh, applicator 5 millimeter which can uh, take care of this upper 3 centimeters we just give the dose to the upper 3 centimeters of the vagina in an endometroid type probably in the uh, serous and clear maybe we can uh, include the lower portion also. Uh, so it uh, avoids all the bowel toxicities or the rectal bladder toxicities when we use this vaginal brachytherapy. So to summarize uh, intermediate risk radiation decreases the risk of local recurrence uh, radiation has no impact on survival brachytherapy is preferred because toxicities are less compared to external radiation. Similar reduction in local recurrence and better tolerated compared to EBRT. No benefit of combining pelvic RT and brachytherapy especially in these high intermediate risk cases. So there are other situations when uh, because uh, I understand lymphadenectomy is not a standard procedure in uh, endometrial cancer if, it, if they do not have any uh, high risk features. So many of them probably the recommended surgery is TH and BSO. And here Dr. Somshekar was mentioning that he will send for frozen and if there is cervical involvement probably with other risk factors on the frozen section he will decide whether to subject the patients to uh, lymphadenectomy or not. So sometimes we get cases referred from outside where they would have done just a TH and BSO and then we think probably the patient is not, not staged fully lymphadenectomy is not done in such a situation what has to be done. So if the patient fits into uh, low risk then the patient may not require lymphadenectomy and Portec 1 patients did not um, all the patients did not uh, undergo lymphadenectomy it was not mandatory to do lymphadenectomy in Portec 1 the local original control was good with RT. So even if lymphadenectomy is not done in a low risk cases when radiation is given it will take care. Then in GOG 99 all underwent lymphadenectomy 
external beam showed good local regional control and patients who underwent lymphadenectomy only the observation arm still had worse local regional uh, whatever uh, control that is relapse were more when high intermediate risk factors were there like grade 3 or lymphovascular space invasion so even if lymphadenectomy is done radiation is indicated in high risk factors uh, are present and uh, doing both may add to toxicity so some of these cases like Dr. Somshaker said he is uh, uh, doing lymphadenectomy if uh, high risk uh, factors are present suppose even after doing lymphadenectomy once the histopathology shows that there is a lymphovascular space invasion or if it is a grade 3 then you have to add uh, radiation to prevent the local regional relapse but at that time we are not electively including all the nodal regions the external internal iliac and uh, up to the common iliac we just include the whatever the upper half of the vagina and uh, the parametral region avoiding the bladder and uh, various other bowel uh, structures so the toxicities will be less and uh, local regional control can be achieved with external beam RT and plus vaginal brachytherapy can be added to this and uh, time C study is going on in those patients where external beam radiotherapy indicated IMRT can be done to avoid all these bowel loops the bladder and uh, toxicities coming to stage 1 B grade 3 which is uh, again a early stage but stage 1 B grade 3 it uh, is a, it, it falls into the high risk uh, group as I uh, mentioned earlier the positive pelvic toad chances are around 28 percent and uh, stage 1 B grade 3 were not included in Portec because they considered that these patients fall into high risk so if you see this study outcomes of high risk stage 1 C grade 3 compared with stage 1 endometrial cancer patients the post operative radiation therapy in endometrial cancer trial the summary of this is stage 1 C grade 3 treated with RT 5 year uh, survival rate 5 year rate of vaginal recurrence is 5 percent pelvic recurrence is 8 percent significant 31 percent of these patients had distant relapse so all these patients also require chemotherapy because it falls into the high risk and distant relapse chances are high so stage 2 also falls in the early stage I will stop after this so stage 2 suppose uh, uh, the patient is taken up for surgery and uh, they would have done a, a simple hysterectomy uh, the TH and BSO and no lymphadenectomy plus or minus lymphadenectomy and pathologically they come to know that the patient has cervix involvement in FIGO 88 they had divided into endocervical gland involvement and stromal involvement but the FIGO 2009 they do not uh, uh, divide this into uh, glandular or stromal involvement they have just put it as a stage 2 if there is a occult involvement then adjuvant pelvic RT plus brachytherapy has to be given the 5 year disease free survival rate is around 68 percent if patients undergo lymphadenectomy probably in a highly selected cases where there are no adverse risk factors maybe vaginal brachytherapy alone can be considered whereas if there is gross cervical involvement like Dr. Somshaker considered uh, frozen many places frozen they may not do but on the table if they see that there is a gross involvement then they may consider radical hysterectomy and pelvic RT has to be given to prevent the recurrences and uh, this is a final summary so if you see these other things probably in the next panel discussion we will discuss the advanced stages.